The other thing that we wanted to share with you is that we have also built tools to educate banks on how to use AI correctly. If you look at a bank, probably there's not going to be more than three kinds of things that you want to do with AI. You want to associate products with customers. You want to cluster and segment your customers into groups or products. Or you want to predict such things as purchase patterns. So these three key things, these three key strategies require very different AI capabilities. So when companies go and procure multi-million dollar AI capabilities based on one type of machine learning, our sniff test says this is not going to be sustainable and scalable. So what we have done, part of our patent, is that we have created this orchestrator of models that enables banks to empower their analytics units, enable them to go and partner with other AI providers. And based on the context of decision making, we can recommend models that are relevant for this particular situation. For example, if you give a credit card to a first year university student, the risk is a very important context. Our system understands that. And although we have not built that model, we know how to go and fetch that model and empower the digital channel in the bank to use it in their experience design. Same thing with purchase prediction, same thing for fraud assessment. And this thing that we call the Flybits inference router really empowers banks, not just to scale their data strategy, but also enable them to procure AI as new capabilities become available. The state of AI at the moment, no matter how much we brag about it, is an animal instinct. Give me a lot of data and I'm going to do a lot of trial and error especially if you are in an unsupervised learning setting, and then I'll try to figure it out. A lot of capabilities around AI will be invented in the future. Cognitive models that require less data, less training time. As an infrastructure owner of a bank, how do you prepare your bank to be able to plug them in as they become available? If you go and procure these very monolithic, non-scalable capabilities, the cost of scaling will be extremely high. So what we do at Flybits, we help you to orchestrate all of this data without seeing any identifiable data information. We do not believe in this notion of data lakes. We think if you co-locate the data, no matter what you do, you will make it prone to security risks. So one of the key capabilities that we have created allows you to orchestrate the data in an orchestrator, ask questions from the data rather than moving the data over. And when you get the answer, move the data back into their respective repositories. For those of you from Europe, this is something that resonates a lot with CIOs of European banks because it addresses GDPR in a very perfect way. Even if you go on a centralized model, naturally the data will be tokenized, it will be encrypted, it follows a hybrid cloud. Your premise would be on-prem or cloud-based, but we don't see any of your data. When a company or a fintech comes to me and says, give me all of your data, I will come back in three months and I'll show you insights. And by the way, you have a new data stream. That's going to be a new project for you. That's a very nice consulting gig. It's not an AI product. So with these capabilities, we want to empower banks to really build a solid, scalable and sustainable AI strategy. Then we empower that with our Experience Studio platform in a visual interface. You don't need to do any coding with that. You can inject models, you can inject data, you can tie it back to an intervention such as a push notification, a UI layout, a chatbot, and then deliver it to the market, either on a channel or integrate with an existing system such as a CRM or any other platform that we have. What are the things that you can do with these capabilities? We'll share some examples with you. We have a team in San Francisco that does a lot of agent-based modeling with these. We understand the spending patterns of a customer and then we correlate that with their travel patterns. We bring all of that data together and then we have insights like the person who tends to do this type of a shopping on a Saturday in this mall tends to have this type of an investment propensity. In order to achieve these things, you need to think of building it through an enabling platform not on the application layer, not on their presentation layer, but having an enabling platform 
that allows these types of use cases to be built by your creative minds. Another example that I can share with you is with one of our customers who is rethinking wealth banking. They came to us and said, you know what, affluent millennials who are our next targets are not going to pay service fees. They don't like service fees. Can we leverage your capabilities? Can we leverage network effects to create a mentor-mentee relationship between our baby boomers and our high net worth clients and the affluent millennials who are going to become our next generation customers? Introduce them. So let's say if I want to be a tech entrepreneur, the bank will use context to introduce me to a relevant mentor. And these network effects will be the driver of the new monetization capabilities for the banks. So the reason we show you this is that figuring out your data strategy will really empower you to come up with a lot of new business models that make your bank relevant and scalable in the future. You can also think outside of a kind of two-dimensional display interface. We are working with digital wallets at point of sale at the top. We can actually tell you which credit card, which loyalty program makes the most sense for that purchase. Many of us forget about the perks that we have on our credit cards. We have a lot of loyalty programs, a lot of cards. This is a case that we have empowered a mobile wallet with the capabilities that we have shown 